Hey, um, I just want to walk through what it's like to scale deep on a nimble storage array or adding capacity um, to a nimble storage array. Most of this content comes from nimble admin training, but there's some additional information in here that you might find relevant. Um, just kind of set the stage. Um, nimble can scale multiple ways, and one of the ways is scaling deep, and that's done by simply adding more disks. Disks can be added by filling out. Um, empty bays inside an all-flash array or adding additional shelves to all-flash or adaptive flash or hybrid arrays. As we look at the all-flash systems, these are kind of the scale deep options for capacity. Um, uh, the, the partially populated AF20Q obviously can only, you know, only starts at 11 terabytes raw. Um, and then as you continue to fill that out, um, it will get larger than that. But really, as we're looking at the regularly populated, the AF20s, 40s, 60s, and 80s, we can see that as the controllers become more powerful, they're able to manage more metadata, and you can go to a higher raw capacity, um, all the way up to 533 terabytes raw. Now, keep in mind, right, this is raw capacity. Now, fortunately, Nimble is also very efficient around that. You get about 73 to 75% usable to raw. So out of that 533, in a single system, you can go to 410 terabytes usable, and then um, your effective capacity at 5x would be over two petabytes at that point in time. So um, that's those are your capabilities from that standpoint. Um, what does that look like really, though? Um, you know, each um, all flash system has 48 bays in each chassis, or two banks of 24, and so usually when you're um, buying capacity, you fill out um, one bank at a time. We're going to skip the, the, the partially populated or 12 drive option and talk about the more standard 24 bay option. Um, and these are your capacities, right? Your raw capacities, 11, 23, 46, 92, or 184, right? And really, we're just Again, 24 drives by 480 gigs, 960 gigs, 1920 gigs, 3840, and just recently we've added the 8 terabyte or 7680 um, gig drives, right? And as we add those in, right, here are the effective capacities we got when we get out to 5x data reduction. And again, that's it, it is in a single system. Um, the adaptive flash systems are going to be a little bit different than that. First of all, the drive layout is very different. There's only 21 capacity drives in there. Um, so um, that's going to be a little bit different. But again, uh, you know, the, the lower end systems um, manage less metadata because there's less performance in the controllers. Therefore, your max raw capacity is going to be lower. HF20 start out at just 210 raw, um, you know, and at 5x data reduction, that's, you know, you know, eight. A, over 800 terabytes of effective space that you have in there. And then we're going up to just over a pe just over a petabyte of raw capacity in the HF60, which um, is about, you know, uh, about a petabyte for uh, usable capacity and five petabytes of 5x data reduction or two petabytes of 2x data reduction, depending on what your data set is. Um, your options for upgrading those, similarly, right? Different, now we've got spinning drives in there, so they're gonna be different size drives. They're one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, six terabyte, 10 terabyte, and newly added 14 terabyte drives, and there's 21. Now, because these are large form factor drives, you fully populate a shelf every time you add capacity for an adaptive flash system. So in this particular case, um, you're gonna have 84 terabytes raw, Right, and you can see how the effective capacities work out here, which is about 68 or 67 terabytes usable, 126, 210, or the newly added 294 in a single shelf. Um, now, if you remember right, the max raw capacity of the HF20 is 210, therefore you can't even populate that one with these 14 terabyte drives. But those are your options, right, for doing that. So you're at, uh, adding shelves, right, is what we're talking about. So what do the, what do the shelves look like? Um, Obviously, they look like this. They look just like the, um, and the drive layout is just like a controller shelf. But when we're adding expansion shelves, once the controller shelf has already been populated, um, they, again, they look the same. Drive layout is the same. There's cache that goes into any hybrid system um, that goes in. So you're adding capacity. You're always going to be adding cache because it's important to keep the flash to disk ratio consistent for, for performance. Um, again, 21 capacity uh, um, slots large form factor, and then there's six SSDs for cache. Um, usually when you add an expansion shelf, it only comes with three of those slots or only bank A, these top ones populated with SSDs. 
Um, it's a 4U chassis. And um, again, uh, you know, just like the, uh, just like the, um, the controller, the expansion shelves have the same um, LEDs, same drive layout. That's true for the all flash as well. Here we can see it's all small, small form factor, right? Two drives in each slot, and the top, um, the top drive is bank A, bottom drive is bank B. You populate one bank at a time. The banks do not have to have the same size drives in them. So you can get up to 48 drives in a single chassis in an all flash system. It's very common if capacity requirements fit to simply populate one bank at a time and then then your first expansion of capacity is simply adding um, drives to the second bank which hasn't yet been populated. Now when we're adding these expansion shelves on though um, they're simply connected with SAS cabling and of course we're talking specifically about the Gen 5 systems that's what this form factor is but it's been SAS connections 12 gig SAS connections for all Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 and Gen 5 systems. Um, there is no Gen 4. And sa there's a SAS in and there's a SAS out. These do not need to be um, daisy chained the way you would like with a switch, right? Um, you're literally um, taking each controller and connecting them to the, um, to the shelf. So this is the back of a shelf. You'll notice there's no network connections. It's just the SAS connections. It still has redundant power. And you would simply tie the connections down from the controller shelf into these. Here are the expansion shelf options currently. So um, uh, you'll notice that's the you know for the uh, for the ES3 shelves for the hybrid systems again one terabyte two terabyte four terabyte six terabyte ten terabyte so um, the the sizes are 21, 42, 84, 126, and 210. Those are the options on there, and those are going to come with a, a certain amount of cash in those as well. And this is how this is how it gets. Um, how it gets connected up. It's pretty straightforward. You rack it and there's a single connection that goes from controller A in the head shelf where the controllers are down into the, um, the shelf on the controller A side. And then there's a connection from controller B that goes into the B side. Um, there are two, as I showed before, there are two connections right on the back of these. You don't have to use all of them. You could literally daisy chain this all the way down. Best practice is you take the first connection, connection A, and you connect it to the first shelf. And then you can take connection B on both controllers and connect it to the second shelf. Then if you have a third shelf, you then daisy chain that off of shelf A. And for um, the fourth shelf, you daisy chain that off of the second shelf and so on and so forth until you get to six shelves. It's a maximum of six expansion shelves on a hybrid system. The all flash systems are different. They need to be able to support more throughput. Therefore, the connection is done a little bit different and the number of shelves that are supported is different. Of course, we also know we can go higher density, right? Because we can put more drives in an all flash system. So rather than a single connection per controller down to the shelf, we're doing two connections per controller. So we can aggregate that throughput for a total of 24 gigabytes of throughput per controller. So you're connecting both from the A controller down into the A side of the expansion shelf. And um, you can go up to two um, expansion shelves on the AF20, F, AF60s and AF80s, a single expansion shelf on the, um, the smaller models. Um, as I mentioned, two of the AFS three is supported. Um, you can connect it with a single connection, but two is what the recommendation is. Now, once you physically connect that up, how do you actually add the storage? This is super easy. You've racked it, you've connected the cables as I just diagrammed. And the next piece to do then is you log into the UI. When you go under hardware, it'll give you the representation of, um, of your array and it will recognize the new drives. In this case, it's an all flash system, right? And we've populated that second, um, that second bank, bank B of drives. And that could be in this case, um, does it say on here? Well, it will here in a second. The, um, if this were a hybrid system, you would be adding a shelf and that shelf would simply show up here and it would look exactly the same. Each one of the drives would show up orange here with a bang on it. And then right here at the top, there would be a button that you could click that would say activate. Once you activate that, the capacity in those drives comes into the storage pool and you now have access to it. 
There's no other RAID configuration that's necessary, no deployment, no uh, mapping of drives, um, anything like that. Um, literally, once it recognizes the capacity, you click on activate and you have that capacity. So what does that look like though in the pool itself and how does it start writing data? Well, let's say that you had a system that was 50% full and you added a capacity shelf or more drives into it. So once you activate it, now your pool is larger and it won't show up as two pools like this. It will be a single pool within the system, but this is just breaking it out into the capacity into those two shelves. So once it does that right, it will write into the new disks in the expansion shelf until it comes at the same amount of utilization as what the head shelf does. And then it will write into both of them as it continues to grow from there. So where leveling is built in to the system and because performance doesn't come from the disks itself, so adding more disks isn't more performance per se, um, it comes out of the controllers, we're able to write this way and keep it very, very even. And you also don't have to worry about balancing workloads onto new disks or moving data around when you add new disks to a system. So it is important to keep this peace of mind though. You add shelves onto a nimble storage array um, when you're powering on and powering off. Uh, do make sure you do it in the right order. Obviously the controller is the brains of the operation. You don't want to turn off any shelves while the controller is still on. So when you're powering things on, make sure all your disks are on first in your expansion shelves, then turn the controller on at the top. And um, then the controller will be able to find all the disks as it comes online. When you're powering off, it's the exact opposite. You power off the controller first and then power off your expansion shelves. Obviously that would make sense, right? Because we don't want to pull drives out um, because it's writing data to all the drives all the time. Um, hopefully that makes sense in how you expand or scale deep on a nimble storage array. There's all kinds of cool references out there, um, including some videos around how, to, how nimble scales and the architecture um, and how the architecture supports that. If you have any questions, you can always Google us or reach out to me or your local nimble storage engineer. Uh, hopefully this was interesting.